into people's lives. That little fellow, he looked like to me that he ought to have been in the library somewhere studying the book. Not to say he was a nerd or anything, but he just didn't. I mean, if you met somebody coming in and shooting up things and, and everything, you sort of picture Brother Mac as a big robust or a big mean spirited person. But I read this story, and I, time wouldn't permit me to get into all of that. But I just watched as there's been such an increase in violence in our land. And what's brought about murder and, and raping and stealing and killing and, and all the things that are happening in our land and country. And the Lord began to deal with my heart. Not only up in Iceland when I, I would go out of a morning and take my Bible and be quiet and nobody came by and said, hey, I know him, that's Brother Randy. So I had plenty of time to just sit and read, study, and go to Lucas, talk to the Lord, and go back into my room there and, and talk to the Lord. Matter of fact, I was looking for people to talk to because that's my my business. Maybe I talk more. I, a lot of times I want to tune in and get a broadcast. But, you know, I, I, the Lord began to deal with my heart about the lay of the land and how things have, have, have just become so wicked and so perverse. And Paul said, this know that in the last days, Paris, look at where the dangerous times shall come. I'm telling you today, it's nothing to hear of uh, somebody breaking into the house of an 80 or 90 year old woman or man taking their life just down in Mississippi a couple of years ago. A young boy got locked up in jail and, and, and they sent him to prison for drug addiction and drug abuse. And, and this is a true story. It's not that, that I fabricated or nothing that nobody else fabricated. It really happened. Sister Crane shared it with me down there uh, when it happened. And this young boy was in prison. He began to send out for his family to come to him and, and to help him. And, and they've done everything. They've exhausted their finances and done so much. So the young boy partnered with a, with a, a criminal inside the prison who was about to get out of prison. And, and so when he did, this young boy gave him his grandmother and grandfather's home address and told him, told him where all the things that they had was kept and all of this. When that man got out of prison, what does he do? He proceeds to go right down to where those people live, went in the house, uh, and, and I won't go into all the details, took those two innocent, hardworking, retired elderly people, both of them close to 80 years old, took their lives. And then they called him, stopped in a gas station and asked for directions. And they called him, but they called him too late. Two innocent souls had gone away. What's that got to do with idolatry, Brother Danny? What's that got to do with idolatry in our land? Let me tell you why. That God dealt with my heart about this message. We live in a society. We live in a day today that verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous. And then you know what that word means? Look it up when you get home. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. We live in one of the most unholy societies we've ever lived in in our day or our ancestors have ever lived in before. The Bible said in chapter 6 of the book of Genesis that the reason that God and that dealt with that world and destroyed that world, that first day, in that world, Sister Clark, with the flood and all the generations that were there, was because man's heart was on evil continually. Amen. And they never thought about anything good. They never thought about anything that was righteous or holy. We're moving to that very thing. We're making full circle and coming right back. Amen. To the very thing that, that, that Noah faced in the day of the flood. When God began to deal with me about this scripture in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, he said the righteous perisheth and no man layeth it to heart. And the merciful men are taken away and not considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. What's Isaiah prophesying? What is he saying? He was saying to Israel that the righteous people die and you don't even care. He said that they're the very seed of God that's holding this thing together. He said, and the righteous are taken away, and none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. I began to study about the rapture of the church and how in Christ, he then said he would not suffer. He then his children to the wrath of God. How the brother Roger that in these last days we're living so close to the coming of the Lord. Folks, we don't have time to lie back around and to be uh, uh, just playing around when our nation is giving itself continually to idolatry and to the worship of dead God. Today you can get up from the Terry and you can start preaching the gospel of, of some kind just making up and those people that will follow after that are because